I welcome to Scarlet Thread Ministries Times of Refreshing on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. We'd just like to take this opportunity to invite each and every one of you to come and join with us as, you know, we discuss the Bible, the Word of God, right, and um, get excited about it, right? So, um, welcome, welcome, share the live, um, you know, come join with us if you're looking at the broadcast at a later date welcome to you as well too right so we um will just open up with a word of prayer and then we'll start so heavenly father we just bless the name this afternoon oh god lord we say that you are holy you are majestic oh god you are larger than life oh god lord <clears throat> we say tonight oh god that we trust you we trust you with our lives we trust you with everything that's concerning us we trust you that um with everything that will concern us, so oh God, Heavenly Father, we just place all our lives, we place everything into your hands, oh God, because we trust your hands, we trust your decisions, oh God, Heavenly Father. Lord, tonight I pray, oh God, for all our listeners, oh God, Heavenly Father, the community, the scholar threat community, your church, Heavenly Father, I pray, oh God, Lord, that's how to be blessed this afternoon by what is about to be shared, oh God, Lord. People will find hope, Lord. Hope in your word. Hope in a hopeless world, oh God. They will see the light in a dark place tonight, oh God, Lord. For that is what your word bring. And most of all, oh God, live refreshed after the broadcast, oh God. And Lord, we just thank you. And we place this broadcast into your hands. We say, have your way and let your will be done, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So today is the 22nd of March. Just now we're going into the um, birthday months. <laughs> Everybody, people, um, some, some, um, some people in the family, birthday is coming up. A set of people. A set of people, yeah. A yeah. posse. A <laughs> posse, I'm coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've, I've without much... I do or further ado, I, I, I want to get straight into the discussion because the discussion today is really something that most people don't want to hear. Most Christians don't practice and they don't want to hear this. Um, most people, well, especially people in the world, they don't want to hear nothing about that. A lot of them will switch you off and say, they, I want to hear nothing about that. But it's something that must be said because there's something that is happening in the world. Um, I also um, decided to speak on this because the last couple of weeks I've been studying. Um, Dr. Eric Williams' book, Capitalism and Slavery, I finished it because I went in so many di different places and did so many different sideline studies based on slavery. Uh, slavery in the Bible, um, I, I studied slavery, uh, you know, how, you know uh, what was the cult here in Egypt <laughs> and all those kind of things. And, uh, uh, you know, it was uh, really exciting. I, even, I went to Antioch, which was where they had the earthquake in Turkey. And study mm -hmm. the history of Antioch and why it had so much, you know, a, a lot of monasteries out there and what happened. But today I don't want to talk about that. I, 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 I don't think I'll, I'll be released so I've, I've, um, or I, um, I have I've finished studying and, and I'm in a position and to discuss slavery and, and the effects of slavery and, and slavery in the Bible especially and why God allows slavery and things like that. But I want to talk about forgiveness. If I had to give the discussion today, uh, I would call it forgive and forget. You know, uh, and the reason why I choose that um, title is because a lot of people say, you know, and there's a cliche where people say, I, I would forgive, I will, I will forgive you, but I wouldn't forget you. Yeah? I would forgive, but I wouldn't forget. So the title is to forgive and forget. And I will try to show people from the Bible um, why, uh, I, I, you know, I, I choose on that title because a, a, a lot of times I've observed and recently a lot of people have mental problems. They have a lot of uh, issues going on, depression and things like that. And um, I realized that um, one of the reasons for the mental problems, the mental issues, the mental health challenges that people have is because um, of unforgiveness. And, and, and you know, they, 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 and they say they forgive people with their mouth, but in their mind, or in their heart, and they forgive anybody. So, as I say, and, and let's get straight into the topic and, and discuss it. And I will begin in Matthew chapter 8, um, uh, um, chapter 18, where um, Jesus was given a parable. 
um, and, and you know, in the presence of his disciples, and he was saying, he, 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 he gave the parable and he said, uh, he spoke about this guy and this slave who was owing his master a set of money, a thousands of dollars. So he went by the master and tell him, Master, we're looking at the money to pay, you know? The master called him. He said, I had the money to pay, you know? And in those days, slavery in the Old Testament and in, in, in that part of the world, if a man owing somebody something, the master, and a, the, 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 a person, who oh, your own could sell your wife, your children, and the whole family could be sold into slavery. Slavery was a common thing in those days. It, it, it was a practice. Um, and, you know, and, and uh, uh, accepted. It's, it's God who come in, who came in in Leviticus and changed the strategies and changed, the, you know, the, 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 and the rules of slavery in the old days, but it, it still hasn't changed because up to now, I, I mean, and, you know, the last um, um, data I, I, I got, from uh, international organizations that they have 8 million slaves um, around the world still accounted for, and it have a, a lot more. So yeah, here it is now. This, and this slave was asking the, um, asking and telling his master, all them thousands of dollars, I'll pay her. I will pay the money, don't worry about it, I'll pay her, I will think, go sell my family and my wife and children and thing, and, 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 and you, you know, I, I ask it, to, I'm going to some more time to pay. So what happened there now is that the, the, the master, um, said unto the slave, he said, well, here we're going on. Because anytime I see servant in the Old Testament, and you don't see paid servant, and then you know the slaves are talking about it. So okay. uh, what happened now is that the, and the master forgave the slave. He said, well, here we're going on. Forget that. Don't, don't bother to pay me anything. So while the slave was leaving the presence of the master and walking out, he bumps up another slave, a fellow slave, who, um, who was owing him a few hundred dollars or, you know, about $200 or whatever it is. So the, the, the slave, uh, he, he asked the slave for his money. He said, give me my money, I want my money. So the, the, the slave who was only 100 and something dollars now, to them I said, don't worry, uh, well, uh, you know, I will give him money. Don't worry, I will pay piece by piece and thing. But the slave who was just forgiven, thousands of dollars, he grabbed the other slave now and he, and he, 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 he technically take him to prison uh, until he paid the money. So then another slave now went back to the master and told him, he said, you know that man, you know, forgive all them a thousand dollars. You know, he, 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 he grabbed another one in a slave and he put him in jail for, for owing him a hundred and something dollars. Well, you forgive him a thousand dollars. So the master called back this slave now and tell him, listen, um, I forgive you so much. And that man owing you and that, uh, that, that, a little bit of money and, 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 and you lock him up for that. I, and because, you know, I, I may cause him and, and to be uh, I'm held in prison until he pay back. Look here what's going on. I'm selling you and your family and everybody until I get my money. And I'm locking you up. I'm making sure you go in jail too. Mm. You feel like keep on begging the master, but the master said no. So the, uh, and that was a problem. So what Jesus was saying um, in, in Matthew chapter 18 and 35, at the end of that parable, he said, So likewise, my heavenly Father, do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother, their trespasses. So... Mm -hmm. What, what, why would Jesus say something like that? And then, you know, if you're studying a New Testament script or something that Jesus said, most of the time it was said or it, it was a law in the Old Testament. So what and Jesus doing now is just interpreting or explaining the law, right? And, and applying it. He, he really applied the law more than discuss it or argue law. He showed people how to, how to accurately apply the laws that God laid on in the past. So he was he, 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 he telling them now, just so if you don't forgive people your trespasses from your heart, right? Um, God is not good, I, I'm going to forgive you. And all other people uh, have holding grudges and they, and they don't want to forgive people or release them. But I will try to show today from the Bible where if, you know you have to forgive people. We, we have a lot of people who are believers and, and they're going to church every Sunday, but they're still holding people in their mind. And, and they still have grudges against people, against one another in church, against the pastor. And, and, and one of the signs of uh, unforgiveness from the heart is the, and the gossip and the bad talking. Because the Bible spoke about uh, and gossiping and, and, and bad talking. And people, uh, is, is a sin similar to assassination or murder. So, it is Jesus is saying now that you have to forgive people from your heart. But the cliche is, I would forgive you, but I wouldn't forget. So uh, let's see what happens if you, have, if, if, if you don't forgive people from your heart. And number one, what's going to happen is that you 
are not only putting that person in bondage, but yourself as well, because you, you, your heart is literally is, is translated as your mind. So what he is saying is to forgive them from your mind. And that word uh, um, from there means off. It means to separate. It means separation. So what he is saying here is to separate. If you separate from your hearts, not your brother, right? If, if you separate that anger, that heat, that unforgiveness from your heart, what's going to happen is, is that God is not, I'm going to forgive you. Then he went on to speak about, um, about, about forgive. But, but a lot of people, you know, ask them, oh, oh, what is forgiveness? What um, does it mean um, to forgive? From the, 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 the Hebrew and the Greek text, the, um, the word um, forgive is, is, is almost um, similar. The, 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 the Greek word I use here is afiyami. Afiyami. What is afiyami? It means to, 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 and, you know, to forsake, to lay aside, to let go, to leave alone. And, and you know, to, and to leave it be. And that's what um, um, forgiveness is. It's to leave it alone, to leave it be. And forget it. The holy person in your mind. For, and first they begin, uh, what's going to happen is God is not going to forgive you because we, we, we want forgiveness as, as, as believers in Jesus Christ. We want him to, uh, um, to forgive us. But he is saying that if we don't forgive people, then God is not going to forgive us too. Right? In other words, you, you will be unfulfilling um, one of the great commandments, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. The same way you want some, somebody to forgive you and God to forgive you. You have to forgive you. You have to leave it alone, especially from your mind. No, you might say with your mouth, okay, I forgive you and I'm thinking, but it, deep down in your heart, you're still revisiting the offense. Right, and you're still re uh, I'm revisiting the uh, a situation that that uh, uh, I'm developed uh, between you and somebody else. And what's going to happen? You keep happening on it and going back and going back all the time. And your mind, right? And your mind is, is, is something that, that I know some people say they can't sleep. They hate somebody so much they can't even sleep good because every time they lie down, that person and that incident come back on their mind or come back to your mind and remember it and keep revisiting the incident all the time. I, I, I have a book I read called um, um, Mastering Your Emotions. And one of the things about mastering, mastering and your emotions is controlling your mind and controlling your thoughts because the emotions is derived from your thoughts first. So we, what we have to do now is to follow our Jesus and God have his reasons for saying that. We have to forgive from our hearts, from your mind, and you have to release these people, especially from your mind. Yes, sometimes you, um, you'll feel a release, but then it, it, the, the enemy have a way and your mind have a way of revisiting that offense. And you keep going and harping on it, right? So, so what, uh, what is, is Jesus saying here? Let aside, forget, forgive your brother, forgive them the, and the trespasses, forgive them the offense or, or whatever, and they did. A lot of people still, you, you know, um, um, angry about certain things and that was done to them in church. They're not going to church because somebody offend them, right? What um, Jesus is saying, you have to let it pass, forget it, and leave it alone, and continue uh, worshiping God. Don't allow somebody to distract you or, 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 or discourage you from going to church based on their behavior, right? And, and look at it as an opportunity to, to grow as a, as, a, as a believer in Jesus Christ. Grow, regardless of whatever religion you belong to. Grow a lot of families. And they're dealing now and, and they're angry for years because of one offense, right? And some people just keep going on and going on with it until the entire family and, and, and every, everybody is destroyed. And, you know, emotionally, I know of, of a family where um, somebody was murdered. A good friend of our family, whom you know too. The entire family went haywire. And the mother used to have a, a mental problems and everybody was depressed or, or, um, years after. And, and, I mean, when I look at it, the whole family was destroyed. And, and, and fra fragmented and, and they won't um, themselves anymore because we know them, you knew them before um, and the incident happened and, and they feel they know who murdered their daughter and, and, and this happened. But the point is, they, 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 they being unbelievers, they weren't able to forgive in their hearts and release it from their mind to, to, and to let it go and trust God, right? The same way, um, it, you know, a, a lot of things happen to people and they say, well, God allowed this um, I mean, you know, why God allow this? But but sometimes His ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We don't know what would have happened. But the point is, in order for us to grow, in order for, for us to mature, in order for us to be blessed, 
in order for, 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 for us to experience eternal life after this one, uh, which is, 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 is more important than the life we live in now. We have to learn to forgive people and forget. And I'll show you that, that um, Jesus said that in, in, um, in Matthew chapter 18 and, 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 and 35, where he was telling them to forgive um, people in their heart. But look at, um, at Leviticus ch chapter 19 and 17. God was giving Israel instructions. You know Leviticus is the book of the law. It's one of the books where God and gave the law. He, he given Israel instructions and telling them and, and, and giving them law, um, laws to follow. He was telling them the things and they should do how to treat a brother and he gave them the commandments plus the law. All the supplemental laws that go with the commandments. But here's what God was saying in, in uh, uh, to Israel. Through Mo uh, Moses in Leviticus chapter 19 and 17. He said, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke. Thou, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. What was God saying here? He said, don't hate, don't, don't, don't hold your brother as an enemy in your heart. Because there are many people passing people straight and not talking to them or they're avoiding people. Or, 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 or every time they see them or think about them, I, 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 I see a change in their mood and, and their appearance and, 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 and behavior because when they're around certain people. Because of what happened, that, that person is still enemy, they still hate people and, they, and technically they're breaking the laws of God. And it's not only Jesus said that, but it's, it's written in the Old Testament and Leviticus. So the Jews have to follow that too, right? If they want to follow the law, you can't hate your brother in your heart. That's, that, that same word hard there is Ibab. Ibab means mind the same way. I'm going to translate translation as your mind. <clears throat> so God is saying, thou shalt not is a commandment. Thou shalt not is a commandment God has given people, right? That they shouldn't hate their brother in their heart. Then he went on now. Um, Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And what he's saying, and what they should do now, don't be angry with them in your heart. And what he's saying to, uh, a lot of people feel rebuke is cussing up the person or buffing them up and thing. The word rebuke they, uh, comes from um, yaka, which means to judge or prove. It means to correct. So in, in, instead of allowing the person uh, or, or, you know, or, or you carrying and that offense and hating the person, you're supposed to face them. You're supposed to challenge them. You, and you're supposed to correct them, reprove them. You, and, and you're supposed to judge them. A judgment there, as I said before, is not ju I'm judging like putting people in jail, but it's to decide what you're going to do with that person. Because they can't continue hating them. Uh, and every time I see them, I may avoid them because I may forgive them in their heart yet. So you have to judge that person, decide what you're going to do with that person. And the commandment is to go and talk to them and rebuke them. Tell them here what we're going to see what you do here. I don't like that. And a lot of people are afraid of opposing people or, or they're afraid of confronting people and telling them how they feel. So they told that feelings inside them for years and not release it. How could you release it by facing a person? Tell them here we're going to see that. That is unacceptable. Are you stressing me out? I'm you offending me. I can't handle that. And what's going to happen? You'll find the burden lifted. And you'll find that anger, that hatred, that unforgiveness being I'm lifted because you confront the person. And if you don't confront the person and you hate them, he went on to say, and not suffer sin upon him. And not suffer sin. And not suffer, uh, and, that, and that word there, I come from the Greek, Nas, the Hebrew Nasa, right? And Nasa means, and not, uh, and, and, and not bear sin on him. Or, or lift sin upon him. It means to lift. And not lift sin upon the person, right? Don't, don't lift the sin. Don't lift the penalty for the crime upon that person. So, it goes back. I don't know if, if, if some people um, would interpret and what Jesus said is that the Son of Man have authority on earth to forgive sin. Yes, the Son of Man have to authority to, to forgive sin that uh, against himself or God because he is God. But we too have the, have the, 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 the authority to forgive sin. But we have the authority to forgive sin against us. That's the authority we have to forgive sin against us. If somebody sin against us, we have the authority to forgive and that person and, 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 and not to heed the, 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 the penalty for that sin on them. It, it, it reminds me of Stephen. I went to stone Stephen, you know, said man. And they matter Stephen and they kill him, they stone him and kill him. He forgave them. He said, Father, um, do, do, do not hold this against them. <coughs> right? So what happened? He exercised his authority to forgive sin when Jesus was on the cross. And he was dying. Right? 
he, on the cross and he said he, he said to God, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had the authority to forgive sin uh, the, and the sin of, 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 uh, against him. Stephen had the authority to forgive the sin that people commit against him by, by killing an innocent man and stoning him. He asked God to forgive them because he forgave them. The Bible says that whatsoever things are bound and it is bound in heaven. And whatsoever things are loose and it is loose in heaven. Offense is one of that. Offense against you. You can be holding people in your mind because you're pulling yourself down. What you're really doing is NASA, you're lifting up that sin or that or the penalty for that sin on top of the person. Right? And you have to understand that. And I'll show you why. If you look at Genesis chapter 15 and 17, remember? Um um, Joseph brothers and them, right? His brothers and them um, sell them into slavery in Egypt. So they, uh, um, um, they sell them to a, 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 a bunch of traders who was passing. So they sold Joseph into slavery. He went into Egypt. He, he went into slavery. So when Joseph now um, going to slavery, he ended up um, uh, you know, advancing himself and became the governor of, of all Egypt, all of Pharaoh. It had nobody above Joseph, who was a slave, above Pharaoh. So what happened there now? Um, um, uh, he was uh, just below Pharaoh. No, and nobody was above Joseph. So Pharaoh was the only man above him. But, but what ha happened now? The brothers and them passed through a farm and they went down Egypt. He see them. He do so and he, 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 you know, he talked to them. He tell them who he was and he helped them. Then eventually now he made himself known to them. And his father died. So in Genesis uh, chapter 50, <clears throat> Jacob died now, and they buried Jacob. They carry a Jacob who was renamed Israel um, to bury him. So, what happened now? So, Israel now, the, 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 and the brothers now decide to still lie because they figure Joseph would want revenge now as his father died. So, they come up with a scheme now to tell him um, this in Genesis 15 and 17. So, they're talking and they say, So shall he say to Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespasses of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto the evil. And now we praise thee. Forgive and, and the, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And, and Joseph wept when they spoke unto him. So Joseph wept. I don't know why he wept. The Bible doesn't say why he wept. But what I'm saying is that they asked Joseph to forgive him because they were afraid. And they were afraid that, that he would seek revenge. And they were afraid that he would uh, want to... Um, and you know, as the father go now, here up, you know, up, man, all hell go break loose. I would deal with all them fellas and them. Or pull all of them in jail. I would make them slaves, whatever it is. And they were afraid of revenge. But look at what Joseph went on to say. He said, Fear not. And don't worry about that. I was in the hands of God. All that was in God's hands because he took me down to Egypt. And he exalted me. And it's he who saved the, the nation and everything. So God woke out everything. My life was not in your hands, or you didn't, and you, you couldn't and determine my future. God I was always in charge, right? And what he did, he forgave them. He said, Look, don't forget that. Don't say that as God was controlling that. So we don't know. Sometimes we, we might go through situations <coughs> and we look at it from the flesh or from a, the, a worldly perspective and, not, and look at what God is doing behind the scenes, how we arranging things, how we organizing things, how we setting and, and things up in order to advance the kingdom of heaven and earth. <clears throat> so sometimes you might go through an offense. Somebody might do you something, right? <clears throat> if you're wrong, you repent, wherever it is, you apologize to the person and move on if they don't want to forgive you. That is not your responsibility. But if they offend you, it is your responsibility if you want to uh, experience eternal life. And if you want to lift the burden of the person and, and be like Jesus, what you have to do? You have to forgive that person. You have to let it slide. You have to let it go. Too much murders and killings and crime going on in the world right now because of unforgiveness. Somebody mash your corn, they shoot you. People free to, 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 uh, to tell anybody anything or to bounce a man. I know man bounce other people car. they have insurance and they, and, and they kill the, um, and the, and the person who was wrong. If you look around now in Port of Spain and, and a lot of places all over trying that unforgiveness is one of the, 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 the root of crime. A, a lot of crime, a lot of murders, a lot of killing in marriages, in marriage relationships. I look at the little boy the, and the mother and try to poison. The boy do something wrong before she forgive him and unforgive him. She get angry. She ain't forgive him for what he do and bam, she gave him some poison and mother do a son that. So you have to understand that unforgiveness is like a plague in the world. And we have to address that 
situation in the church first before we go and address it outside. We can't go, go and, and, and address things outside and we see it happening in the church. Clean out your own house first before we go out. We, and, and before we go and, and, and point our fingers at people and say, yeah, and, them, they, and they are this and they are that. We, judgment shall begin in the house of the Lord, the Bible says. So we have to first judge ourselves and decide what we're going to do and how we're going to approach on this life. Because, because um, clearly what, what, what um, God was saying, is that you have to decide what you're going to do with the person. You have to judge the person. Judging people is not condemning them, but it's to decide. A judgment is a decision to decide what you're going to do with that person. So we have to understand how we have to forgive. We have to let, and let it go. We have to release it because one, we holding that person down, and two, we don't have a, a free mind, we, and we don't have a clear mind, we don't have peace. And there can never be peace in your life because you will always keep revisiting that incident, and there will never be peace in your life. Plus, you, you, I mean, you may lose your opportunity for eternal life as well, too. Because God is not going to forgive you your sin if you don't forgive everybody else their sin or anybody else. So, and, and this is what Joseph did. And Joseph forgave his brothers and, and the soul of slavery, but he looked at the good side of it. And he said, look, you know what happened? God was in charge. Well, look what happened. And look where I reached. Look, look, I saved my whole family. I saved everybody. I was able to, um, to, to, yeah, and, you know, to keep my family alive. Israel. I went into um, into Egypt as um as a family. They came out as a, as a nation. Look at what happened because of Joseph. So many times we go in through things. I mean, would I want to know if we unlucky or if we blight or something? But God, if you trust God, if you put your and your life in His hands and you trust His judgment, and if you remember that He is still Lord of the earth, He is still God. He's still in control, right? A lot of people don't, don't, don't and believe that God is still in control because of what, what it is going on. But many things and that is happening. I am seeing it um, 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 and coming to pass. A lot of the, of, of the prophecies, a lot of the things and that was said. I am seeing it coming to pass now. Because if you look at the, if you study the Bible and you look at the at world events, I study the both of them together. I study my Bible. And while I study the Bible, I'm looking at, at, at world events. So I say, well, okay, the Bible says about this. Look at how much um um hailstone everywhere now India all over the place hailstones right all this happening right I, 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 and people are even looking around and look at how much flood and look at how much disasters and look at what's happening with all this God said what happened and we must not be afraid what what you have to do is to make sure and and stay strong stay in the faith don't give up and don't and, and, and don't be afraid fear not for I am with you always until the end of the world until the end of the age, and that's what Jesus said. So if you don't have faith to believe uh, that and Jesus is coming again and, and, that, and that he have your life in his hands, then you, 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 you're going to panic and, and worry about what is happening. Financial problems, you know all that is going to happen. We, and we know about all these plagues and, and, and earthquakes and hurricanes and flood and hailstone. <coughs> I see more hail in the last few months than I, I have heard about and seen in my entire year, life over 60. I've never seen so much or heard so much. Um, hail falling all over the world. Hail falling everywhere. The Bible speak about hail as, as big as a hundred pound falling. We, we, if, 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 if people are afraid now we, we, or, or with a little golf ball hail or, 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 or uh, a tennis ball hail, wait until they start seeing hundred pound hail falling from the sky. Then you will um, um, panic. So we have to understand now that if we want to experience eternal life, if we want, if we want to live a victorious life, we have to begin with forgiveness. Because forgiveness is our way to put in on the person. Now, let me show you something. Isaiah 53 and 4. And this is Isaiah prophesying about the Messiah, the coming of Messiah. And here what he said in, 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 in verse 4 of chapter 53. He says, surely, surely means in fact, he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. What we have to understand is that Jesus, we sin, Adam sin, all of us inherit his, his, his sin and, and, and flaws. So what happened? And Jesus came now and paid the price. He, 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 he bear our grief. He bear our grief, right? Being there still lift up and now say the same thing. He lift up. Jesus and literally lift up our griefs. Where is griefs? <coughs> griefs there is, 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 mal, is anxiety 
and calamity. Grief there is, is uh, uh, I want to be the definition of sickness. He take that up, he lift, he, he lift it off of us. He lift it up. <coughs> he literally lift it up. The same way, if you forgive somebody, you lifting up <coughs> the penalty for that sin or that offense against you from and them. Not only them too, but you're lifting it and that penalty from you because if you don't forgive them, then God has forgiven you of your sins as well. So you uh, you you are you under pressure there, and it's a it's a hard a hard pill to swallow, especially for a lot of people who figure one save always save and and and, and believe that okay we believe in Jesus Christ we have it. No, you have to work out your own salvation in fear and trembling, and you have to continually die daily. Die to what all all, all the, the the stumbling blocks we have before us, and one of the major stumbling blocks not only in the church, right? And I'm talking about the denomination, the Church of Jesus Christ. Right, and in the kingdom of heaven is unforgiveness, and that's one of the most difficult things for people to do, especially with the kind of crime and, and the kind of offense that and that we experience now. But we have to forgive. We have to lift the, the people out, lift them out from 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 the penalty of that crime or the or or, or, or that sin, so that we also will be lifted out. Do want to others that will have them? Do want you? If you want God to forgive you, you you have to forgive somebody else. And that was the gist of the parable that Jesus was given earlier in, um, in Matthew chapter 18. So and Jesus lift up. He lift up. He, he literally lift up all our calamities, all our sorrows. He lift it up. And then he, he say, carry our sorrows. Carry this like a porter. He, 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 he moved like a porter and he put it on his back. It, it, it have a word, um, a, a derogatory word in Trinidad that, that it is used for Indian people and I racial. Because I mix up with everything. It have a, derog a derogatory word, but I will use it. Jesus lift up, he carry your burdens, he carry your sorrows, and like a coolie. A coolie is really somebody who told load and uh, who, who told load. And, 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 and Jesus became a coolie so that you and I and, uh, is gonna be free of sorrows, free of grief. You know, after your mother passed, the, the grief when we passed through the, 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 the pressure, but God came in in many ways and, and he. He, 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 he taught the grief. He, he, he taught the grief. He didn't lift it. We still had the grief, but he taught it with us. So you have to understand now that if, if, you, if, if you have, and you know, and you're calling and people all kind of names and things, but Jesus became all that so that we are going to be saved. So all the derogatory names, all the, 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 the unforgiveness here taught him, Jesus himself carried all that, right? He carried all that and he also carried the sorrows and the grief for that person who you don't want to forgive. Because he is not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. So you have to understand, we who are believers feel we want to live like Jesus. We've given ourselves title. I am this and I am that. I'm giving myself title. I'm walking around with my... Right? And I'm looking down on other people. Do something wrong and you're forgiven. You are sure you're going to heaven. If you don't forgive, because if you don't forgive somebody, then God is not going to forgive sin. So many Here happen if you want to be free of this burden, this mental burden, pray for the people who offend you. And I start doing that. And right away, the burdens were lifted. You know why? Because I start asking God for help. I start to feel a release. I start to feel a freedom. I start to feel like a like Jesus take back that, that burden and he start carrying it. Because if I do forgive or ask for help, what's going to happen? I'm going to be totaling it myself. And many people are totaling their own grief. Uh, and they lifting up their own grief. And many people carrying their own sorrows. Why? Because they don't want to forgive people. Right? He, he, he was stricken. It, it means he, he, he was... Um, he, 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 and you know, they lay hands. He, 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 I, I want to go into that now because I have a thought. I was going, I was going on and explain what... 
esteem stricken and smitten of God and thing is. But I want to talk about unforgiveness. I don't want to lose. Um, I don't want to lose anybody um, um, attention now. But but the point is, we have to forgive. We have to learn to forgive. Otherwise, you know what, man? We losing it too. So that is the is the is is the, is the gist of my discussion today. I'm not going to continue, but I, I'm I'm saying and that is an issue we have to address um, in the body of Christ, in the ecclesia, because you and I know how many friends and people we have who don't go to certain ministries anymore because of offense. Offense there any and the Bible refer to offense as a stumbling block, you know. A stumbling block. And let me tell you something. While I studying slavery, capitalism and slavery and all these things, I'll tell you something I observe. Paul referred to himself in Romans 1 and 1 as a bond servant of Jesus Christ. King James was going to say servant. Bond servant is really a bond slave, right? So what happened there now? Paul, when he referred to himself as a bond slave or a bond servant of Jesus Christ, People don't understand that. So people call themselves servants. Oh, I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. I am a this and I am a that. But we, do we really understand what a slave is or a bond slave? I wouldn't go into the different things, but in Egypt they had um, three types of slavery. They had slavery, and that is referred to as chattel, where um, the people own the slave. Right? It's, a, it's property. Chattel slavery is, is, is property in Egypt. And that's what Israel experience and, 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 and they pass through. Then you had bond slaves. A bond slave is somebody who owes money or something and he becomes a slave because he has a debt. And he owes because he has a debt, he can't pay the debt and he became a slave of the, of the person who probably paid the debt for him or um, who he was owing. And then, and then they, 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 they have another kind of slave where you have paid slave. But the point I want to make here is when um, um, this guy, um, Paul, the apostle Paul, referred to himself as a bond slave. What Paul was really saying, if you understand, um, and what I now said there about bond servant, Paul was saying, when he says a bond servant of Jesus Christ, what he was saying is that he owed Jesus for something that he can't pay. That is what he, he was saying. So, a bond servant or a bond slave. In, 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 uh, in, in those times and, 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 and in that part of the world is somebody who is owing somebody a debt and they can't pay the debt. So we now, who are, who, who are believers and we calling ourselves servants, we have to understand why we calling ourselves servants is really a slave you calling yourself, right? A bond slave. A bond slave is not a shuttle and Jesus said, eh, thing, but you're saying he's your master, right? He own you, right? And because they can't pay that and what did he pay our debt? He even the, uh, you know, he, he paid our debts on, on the cross. He paid our debts. All he came to preach the kingdom. He came to preach the kingdom of heaven is here. And as we came to preach, but while, but, but here now in his body, he paid, in, in, in his body, he paid our debt for sin. The sin that Adam committed. Because they say by one man's sin entered the world. And by one man's price or re blood or repentance, um, a man was freed from that sin. He, he became the second Adam. So what I'm saying here now is that here it is, Jesus paid all those prices. He paid and that price for everybody. And if we are born servant of Jesus Christ and we can't pay, he paid our, and that debt for us and we can't repay him for that debt. What we have to do is obey the master. That's why we call him a master because he's owner. Right? We, we, we have to repay the master which is translated Lord in the Bible. We have to pay the Lord. When we call him Lord, is really master, we call him and our owner. Right? If they say landlord, who well, he is? He's the owner of the land. So if Jesus is our Lord, well, he's our owner. He owns us. So what I'm saying here now is that if he is if he owns us and he is our Lord, what we have to do is obey what the Lord say. And he said to forgive do from your heart. Forgive from your mind. Release these people from your mind. Lift them. I literally separate. Um, that, that offense from your mind, right? So, 39 minutes and 50 seconds. Um, that's my contribution for today. Yeah, appealing, it was good. Appealing it was a, oh, it was a good reminder to forgive and to forget. And I think the yeah. hardest part is to forget. I think it's easier to forgive, and the hardest part is to forget. 
you know, but um, the thing about it is, is that the both of them weigh you down, especially if you want to, um, um, to forget, you know, and also when I say weigh you down, like I had a lady tell me over the weekend, you know, she say, she said, um, you know, um, when my husband and I tried to make it work, he would always bring up things from the past, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we could never move forward, you know, but she wanted the marriage to work, but she said he was bringing up, bringing up things from the past now, and we could never move on, and she said that was the, that was the main reason why they, it, it, it led to divorce, you know, so yeah. yes, I agree with yes to forgive, but that's a very important part, and to forget is not to say it, le it could leave your memory, it can't leave your memory, you know, you just try not to Put Think your energies it. and yeah, correct. And constantly, I mean, you will your mind will pass, it will pass by one day, you know, situations and conversations and things will come up that will remind you, but then you don't dwell on it. You say, you know, I was listening to well, something. And you can I was do like Joseph and say it's um, and that's the experience God took me through. I was listening <laughs> to something, I can't remember what it was. I don't know if it was an expert. I can't remember what I was listening to, but the guy was saying our minds, our brains, right? Our minds are made up where we could um, create thoughts and then we could dismantle thoughts. I can't remember what it was. And I think I stopped and I thought about that and I said, that is so true. The same speed you could create a bad thing. He said you're creating stuff that um, may not even happen. You're creating scenarios to create fear that may not even happen, right? And the thing about <coughs> it is he said the same speed you could create thought is the same you could dismantle it. You, the choice is yours, you know. The choice but, is yours. Are you going but, to carry it or are you going to just, as they say, let it go? Separate it because and what happened, uh, and what happened if, if you don't separate it from your mind? Straight off from your mind or separate it, you will continue to relive yeah. the same thing over and over. You will, yeah. you will continue to um, torture to, yourself in that way. Yeah. And, and go on. I've seen many marriages in my lifetime, many marriages, many relationships um, come to an end or, or, or um, you know, what was rough because. Some people just continue living in the past. Some people just and, and drop it. So you move from, you know, I, I heard somebody tell a, a woman recently, they say, um, here what happened, you see you? I don't, I, I, I don't think you should, is a counselor. I don't think you should get in any relationship now because you're toting too much baggage mm -hmm. into the new relationship you want to have. So you're counseling, and the, and the preacher counseling this woman, right? And saying, you know what happened? Before you start our next relationship, but I'm best to get rid of the, the, and the baggage from the last one because you're toting thing into your new relationship and it's going to affect your new relationship. So the yeah. new relationship now is not I'm going to be as free as the old relationship. So he, he was telling, he was counseling the woman and telling her, um, I told him too much baggage. I, I carry mm. too much. Thing. So you have to leave some baggage before you, you embark upon a new experience in life or, 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 or thing. And, it, it, yeah. and not only that, too, it has happened with parents and children. Children experience things uh, with their parents that have certain experiences, and they want to have children too. So it is, they, they, and they have children now, and they're carrying that experience that they had into the relationship with their children. And they can't, and, and they can't, uh, you, you know, and they can't be free in, in the relationship, especially if you had bad experiences as a child, and you had children, and you were remembering where your father or your mother or your uncle or whatever it is do. I remember mm -hmm. that time. And it could cause demon possession too. I'll tell you why. At the time I was in um, in ministry with Kirk and all them fellas, and I'm using in a place called um, a place called Bocaro, Central Trinidad. Had a big crusade going on there, real people coming out from all about the place. But there wasn't deliverance ministers eh? Um, I was the only deliverance man there who came in. So this woman come in now. She going to church for years, eh? Years that woman going to that church. You know? But we going wrong there to have this crusade. Yes, yeah, she going to church. Thing and I going along there now. Eh, eh. She started to act up in church one night. 
So, and she, come, she, she is our official instructor, you know, and, and going. She started to act up. So, everybody watch me and I say, hey, Glenn, deal with that. I say, well, nobody can come in here with me. No, 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 Glenn, you go and deal with that. So, I go now. Two people come with me, right? It was a woman, so I couldn't, mm -hmm. I, I, I wasn't touching the woman. Mm -hmm. I wasn't touching. Right? It's two, and the two women there. Because, you know, it's protocol in ministry. Yeah, you don't counsel a woman by herself if he's a man and he's the pastor. Got plenty of pastors get tired of that. And two, if you're praying for people and it's, it's demon possession, you don't ever go and pray for them alone or think because I know a certain person I went, I went to deliver a woman and married a woman after. So I ain't saying that. Anyway, and that's and, and I for a different forum. But the point I want to make is this woman I pray for this one, she's demon possessed. Mm hmm. But the prophetic anointing come on, so I could, uh, I, I was, you know, I was accurate in everything I say and praying for and talking to the woman. So I started to tell her, I say, um, I, I say, you, you have a lot of unforgiveness and abuse in your life. So as she started to talk now, the, 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 and the devil and raised up now, so I talked to him, I said, you shut up, I want to speak to her. But they had to obey. Mm -hmm. So she started to talk to me now. And, and thing, and I started to talk. So, and the, and the woman I'm around, she was she grew up in a home with her family, her cousins and uncles and them, right? For some mm -hmm. reason, I know she ended up in that home in Central. And the uncles and everybody used to ab sexually abuse the girl. So she grew up with this hate and this anger and this bitterness and thing until she became demon possessed, because because the hate and anger will open doors that and, and allow her to be in, in in a situation where. She had no control over it anymore. The amount of hate and anger she had. Then she yeah. get delivered every room. I was about five o'clock in the morning. Hours, right? I did. Hours because you and, and I could tell exactly where um and this thing moving up. I seen the belly and jumping up and down and moving you know, like a snake and thing. So what happened now? You see there for hours. Anyway, you won't get delivered. She in church now, right? The last time we went to visit, she in church. The, and the woman is at peace. Her whole demeanor. But I will tell you something about that. She started to hum and sing. One of the sweetest melodies I ever heard after she got delivered. So I stop and I listening. And I am um, hearing this melody. She humming, boy. I sing, but hey, this is a sweet, sweet melody. She could real sing. She should mm -hmm. be on the worship team in the church. <coughs> mm -hmm. Because well, she humming sweet now. Hey, hey. When <coughs> I hear that. But I said I feel ministered to her. Because yeah. I stopped talking and the whole place get quiet. It's about half past four in the morning now. Place quiet. And I hear this woman humming. But if I see all that thing echoing through the church. The, and, the, and the hum, you know, it echoing. <clears throat> when I go back and see the woman, I say, but you could real sing. She tell her my thanks. And, and she understand all oh, what oh, goes through. And she hear everything because she was not aware. I see you could real sing. She say, sing. I just crow like a frog. I can't even carry a note. I see you see rest. <laughs> she say, yeah. I say, I, I was not going to tell you because you should join the worship team. I go mash up the whole thing. And she really can't sing it. <laughs> so all those were blessings and things. And, and what happened with that? It, 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 all that, that experience, that positive experience and blessing, she missed for years of her life because of unforgiveness. And, and you know, and then it, 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 it caused havoc. Not the woman. But I didn't, I didn't see her for about over 20 years or more. Well, it was small. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that is some of the 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 the, the downside or, or, or the, the, the uh, that is one of the price you may have to pay for unforgiveness in your life by allowing yeah. this heat and this anger inside you all the time. I am not I am I am not a, a, a deliverance a minister, but I'm speaking about an experience I had. Mm -hmm. You delivering somebody like that. Yeah. So forgive and forget. <clears throat> yeah, to forgive and forget. So we'll leave that right there, right? Mm -hmm. And for those of you who have ears to hear and heard, right? We mm -hmm. will leave that right there. And for you to deal with whatever unforgiveness you have, it will have to happen tonight. Well, try to work on it. Let it be a work in progress, right? Mm -hmm. And also, we can't forget, but what we're trying to say is don't dwell on it. You understand? Mm. And ask the Lord, main thing in your prayer time, ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit is there to help us forgive and forget, most importantly. But, 
<laughs> and one of the things you have to do too is take control of your thoughts. You yeah. allow your mind to wander and stray and and um and, and go back for any time you feel that coming on and your mood changing on your mind, then you shut it down one time. Yeah. I just talk to myself, people feel I'm mad. But I talk to myself, I say no, and I, 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 I don't I, no 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 and I woke up. And people must see me saying that and say he's crazy, but it's better to be crazy than total feelings. <laughs> Yeah, true. To be considered crazy, not be crazy, considered crazy. That and and I mean, other people could just think it and it would work <clears throat> by shutting things out. Um, now, as I have the experience, not now, as, as I had the experience a long time, I, I'm able to shut things and focus and keep my mind. And you know, anytime you have, I um, you find your thoughts strain, <laughs> or, or, or you find your, your are, we, are we visiting an offense. Or, 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 you know, a situation where you were offended and you're carrying unforgiveness. Meditate on the word of God. True. Occupy and, and, your and, mind and your, and your yeah. energy into something else. Exactly. Occupy on, your thoughts. On, on the word of God. On, yeah. on God's word. Day because, and night. The, because the word of God is quick and true, which is living and sharper than a two edged sword, piercing us under the division of bone and marrow, spirit and soul. It, had a, it is a discern of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yeah. So once you, you fill yourself with the word of God, the word is, is, is what is going to discern where, where that thought came from and where it's going. Yes. Yeah. Look, yeah. look, look, you know, I read that from Jesus by then. I want to say, I forgive any heart. I didn't even know God gave that commandment. I never heard people speak about that commandment in Leviticus. Mm hmm. And explain, you know, and forgive is your mind, and they're talking about both Old yeah. and New Testament. Forgive the person in your mind. Go to them in your mind, just uh, and release them and go your way. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> yeah. So um, we'll just wrap it up there. I'll just have to take this opportunity to wish Auntie Ruth a happy birthday. I don't want to call her age, although she ain't have no shame about. Oh, it. yesterday was her birthday. Yesterday was her birthday, yeah. So, Auntie Ruth... She's 60 years, boy. 60 or 61 years, boy. She's two years younger than me. 62. years. No, yeah. she's 61. No, she tell me she's 62. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Auntie Ruth, happy birthday, you know, from all of us here at Scarlet. Your co-workers here at Scarlet Bread Ministries. <laughs> <laughs> your co-workers in the vineyard, right? Um, Auntie Ruth, she is um, one of the... Um, ministers on the platform, on the broadcast, um, what you call it? Soup for the Soul? Yeah. The international segment that we have, Soup for the Soul, right? So she said, um, you know, she's working on some stuff to share. So from if you're listening to it or if you will be listening to it, we send you some birthday greetings here for you. Yeah, but I, I, I hear from her for a long while, so I thought she backslide now. I just said. <laughs> so, um, and then Friday was past birthday. Yeah. So, um, you know, well, we find here for us to wish him a happy birthday, you know, but we remember them that day. And, um, you know, yeah, so that's about it. So we had some March birthdays. All so right. we will wrap that up there to forgive and to forget, right? It's a good reminder for us to check and stop. Um, I want to add just stop, stop keeping yourself in misery a little bit. You know, stop keeping yourself in misery. You might look a little older and you might age faster if you keep going that way, you know. But, um, you know, take it as food for your soul, as a lesson to learn, to forgive and to forget. Give it a try this afternoon, right? So it doesn't just go for you all, it goes for us first, right? Before we could even present it to you all. So we'll just wrap that up here tonight. And we will close off with your road yeah. match. Right? Mm -hmm. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, oh God, Heavenly Father, to forgive and to forget, oh God, Lord. We thank you for even the reminder in Scripture, oh God, where one slave was forgiven and didn't forgive, um, you know, the one who was indebted to him, oh God, Lord. We thank you for that reminder, oh God, Lord, um, <coughs> that, Lord, in it, that you forgive us. And in return, we need to forgive others, oh God, Lord. We ask right now that your Holy Spirit aid us, help us tonight, oh God, Lord, to um, conquer these, these unforgiving emotions, oh God, Heavenly Father, these unforgiving thoughts and 
circumstances that keep replaying in our minds, oh God, Heavenly Father. And Lord God, I just thank you tonight, oh God, that you're helping each one of us to forgive and to forget tonight, oh God. And Lord God, we just bless everybody tonight. We just say thanks, oh God, for you is in us in this season, oh God. And we just bless your name, oh God. We say we love you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So Sunday morning. Yeah, Sunday morning. Right? So bye for now. Have a good night and take a listen. Advice from me heart. Written and recorded in the studio by our very own here, my dad, Anthony Glenn Dawson. So take a listen. Bye for now. And you'll see us back again on Sunday. Please go. Take care. Bye. I sit down to write a gospel lip so Cause I hear it too much smart on the radio Right from the start I make up my mind The past never singing about no drum and wine I write a song just to win a crown But to edify the love and to make you strong Who don't want to hear well then they go feel The adversary come to kill and to steal I want my friends and them go to hell when Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down here to show all of us the way So we wouldn't have no problems on judgment In these days with knowledge on the increase We got to guard against the mark of the beast The earth is full of violence and full of hate We must be patient and keep the faith Let not your heart be troubled, you must be bold Though the love of many people waxing cold Man look up and don't you submit to fear It's just your redemption that's drawing near And I want my friends and them go to hell when Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down here to show all of us the way So we wouldn't have no problems on judgment day Said in his heart that there is no God The beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord Look how much you quick, hurricane and flood It's time to repent and get under the blood I'm telling you my friends, look all your air blind The days we live in it is the end of time You can try to run but you cannot hide Very soon the groom coming for the bride and I want my friends and them go to hell When Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down here to show all of us the way So we wouldn't have no problems on judgment If things so bad you feel there's no hope You want to give up because you just can't cope No matter how you try you feel you and distress Do you sacrifice and you try your best I want you to remember the man from the cross He came down here so far, now he is the boss Don't forget we pray may last for one night And the darkest hour comes right before the light Lord, I want my friends and them go to hell When Basil come and start to ring up the bell I hope you don't mind, I'm trying to give advice The only way to make it is to follow Christ He came down here to show all of them the way So they wouldn't have no problems on judgment day I am the pastor 
And I declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And any tongue that rises in judgment against you, you will condemn. For that is the inheritance of the children of God. Be strong.